In this video, you're going to learn how to find the value of A that makes the two lines either parallel or perpendicular. And we're going to go through three examples together. So let's dive into this first example. So in order to determine whether lines are parallel or perpendicular, we have to find the slope of the lines. Now remember, if the lines are parallel, they have the same slope, so they're going up at the same rate. That's why they don't cross. Now if they're perpendicular, meaning they form a right angle, a 90 degree angle, they're what we call opposite reciprocals of each other, meaning the signs are opposite. One's positive, one's negative, and you're gonna flip it, so it's gonna be the reciprocal. So you'll see how this works in this first example. But notice that these equations, they're not in the slope-intercept form. They're not in this y equals mx plus b form. We wanna rearrange them and solve for one y so we can identify the m or the slope value. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this uh, first equation, I'm just gonna rewrite it here and we're gonna solve for y by working from the outside in. So I'm gonna get rid of this 2x by subtracting 2x from both sides. So that gives us negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 10. Divide everything by negative 3 so we can get that y by itself. And now you can see we have y equals positive 2 thirds x minus 10 thirds. We can see that the slope of that line is 2 thirds. So let's first deal with finding out what A is so that the lines are parallel. But in order to do that, we're going to have to rearrange this equation as well to solve for y. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to subtract the ax from both sides, I'm trying to get this y by itself. So we have 5y equals negative ax plus 7. Divide everything by 5, just putting this in the slope intercept form. The y equals mx plus b form. Okay, now you can see that the slope here is negative a over 5. See, just in front of the x, this is your m or your slope. If we want the lines to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. So let's go ahead and set these two equal to each other. So we have negative a over 5 is equal to 2 thirds. And what I can do is I can multiply both sides by negative 5, which that's really like negative 5 over 1. And you can see a negative times a negative is a positive. Multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5, those are inverses, they cancel. So we just get our a by itself, and this comes out to negative 10 over 3. So that's the value of a that will make the two lines parallel. Now perpendicular, so at a right angle, the slopes we set are opposite reciprocals. So if this slope is 2 thirds, we want this slope over here to be equal to negative 3 halves. Let's write that down, negative 3 over 2. We want it to equal to this slope here, negative a over 5. Same idea though, we're going to get the a by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 5. Again, remember that's like negative 5 over 1. This gives us positive a equals 15 over 2, and that's the value of a that will make the lines perpendicular or at a right angle. So let's try another example. See if you can do this next example on your own, and we'll, of course, go through it together. Okay, first step, we need to rearrange the equations to solve for y so we can find the slope of each of these lines. These are in like what we call standard form, where the variables are on the left, the numbers on the right, but we want to solve for y. So let's take this first equation, and let's work from the outside in towards that y. Instead of subtracting 7x, let's add 7x to both sides. So this gives us 2y equals 7x plus 12. We just want to solve for 1y, so instead of multiplying by 2, let's divide both sides of the equation by 2 to keep it balanced. And so that comes out to y equals 7 halves x plus 6. Again, the number to the left or in front of the x, that's our slope, that's our m value. For this equation, we want to solve for this y, so let's go ahead and subtract 3x from both sides. Remember, you always do the opposite to get rid of a term that you don't want. And then here we're going to divide by negative y, because we just want, uh, I'm sorry, negative a, because we want to get the y by itself. So divide by negative a, so all these terms. Okay, so that comes out to y equals a negative divided by negative is a positive 3 over ax minus 4 over a. See, a positive divided by a is a negative, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so I just wrote this as a minus sign, okay? But notice the slope here is 3 over a. And if we want the lines to be parallel, that means that they have the same slope, so we have to set these slopes equal to each other to solve for a. So let's do that. 
Now, you can do this a couple different ways. One way to do it is to uh, do the cross multiplying. You probably learned this when you learned about proportions. So multiplying the diagonal, 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 7 times a is 7a. I just want to get a by itself. So instead of multiplying by 7, let's divide both sides by 7. And so you can see that a is equal to 6 sevenths. And that's the value of a that makes the lines parallel. Now, if you want the lines to be perpendicular, we have to find the opposite reciprocal. Okay, so opposite, this is positive, so we want this uh, other one to be negative. We're going to take the reciprocal or flip it, and we're going to set it equal to the slope over here, so 3 over a. Okay, so now another way to do this problem, if you don't like the cross multiplying, is you could multiply both sides by a, because multiplying and dividing, those are inverses, so this just comes out to 3 equals negative 2a over 7. I can multiply both sides by 7. Okay, so that gives us 21 equals negative 2a. And then we just want to solve for 1a, so let's divide both sides by negative 2. And so you can see a equals negative 21 divided by 2. That's the value of a that will make the lines perpendicular or at a right angle. So let's take a look at one more example. See if you can do this last example on your own, and then we'll go through it together. While you're working out this last example, I want to let you know about my two courses that I have for sale. I'll put a link in the description below. I've got an Algebra 1 video course for sale and an Algebra 2 slash College Algebra video course for sale where I take you through both of those courses. There are about 85 lessons and they build on one another and take you progressively through those courses. I've got some examples, I've got some opportunities for you to practice, and we go through the concepts as well. So check those out if you're learning those courses or want to review. But let's look at this last example here. Again, we're going to follow that same process of rewriting these equations in this slope-intercept form by solving for y. So in this one, we have to add 2x to both sides. That gives us negative 5y equals 2x plus 4. Divide everything by negative 5 to get that y by itself. Keeping the equation balanced, we're doing it to both sides. So we have y equals negative 2 fifths x minus 4 fifths. The negative 2 fifths is the slope of this line. We want to find out what is the slope of this line by solving for y. So let's go ahead and subtract 3ax from both sides. That gives us negative 4y equals negative 3ax plus 6. This is a positive 6, that's why I have plus 6. Divide by negative 4 to get the y by itself, everything. So that comes out to y equals 3a over 4 x minus 3 halves if we reduce. Okay, so see this number that comes in front of or to the left of the x? That's our slope of this line. But if we want these lines to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. So let's go ahead and figure out what a needs to be in order for the lines to be parallel. I like the cross multiplying technique. I like to just kind of go like this, multiply on the diagonals. Okay, that's one way to do it. Uh, let's see, so that gives us 15a equals negative 8. That gets rid of the fractions for you. And then instead of multiplying by 15, we'll just divide both sides by 15. And so you can see a equals negative 8 15. So that is the value of a that makes the lines parallel. Now if we want them to be perpendicular, we have to find the opposite reciprocal. So opposite means instead of negative, we're going to make this a positive. We're going to take the reciprocal, which means we're going to flip the fraction. So 5 over 2. Now, by the way, if, you, if your number was 4, you can think of that as 4 over 1. Then when you take the opposite reciprocal, that's going to be negative 1 fourth. So if you have a whole number, just make it a fraction by putting it over 1. And now we're going to set these equal. We've got 3a over 4 is equal to 5 over 2. Now, another way to do this to get a by itself, this is like 3 fourths. Let's multiply both sides by 4 thirds. Because you can see the 4's cancel numerator and denominator, the 3's cancel numerator and denominator. Here we can do a little cross-reducing. 2 goes in here once, 2 goes in here twice, so that's 10 over 3. So that's the value of a that would make the two lines perpendicular. So great job if you were able to follow these three examples. If you want more practice talking about equations of lines, parallel and perpendicular, I'll put a related video right there. Follow me over to that video and we'll get some more practice.